session for February 1st, 2018. My name is Scott Wagner, Mayor Pro Tem, as the mayor is ill today and will not be joining us, so I'll be running the meeting. Um, uh, we have a light uh, attendance at the moment, so we will defer all those items that may need to be voted on until later when we may have a quorum. But one of the items that we can go ahead with is the 2017 business survey presentation. Um, I assume someone is ready to make that presentation. So gentlemen, come on up. Um, as you do, I will just note for those who may be watching in the audience that uh, this is a survey that we do every year to take the temperature of our business community and understand uh, how satisfied or perhaps unsatisfied with certain aspects of our, op our operation they may be. Um, and with that, I see the slide deck is ready to roll. So uh, gentlemen, I will let you introduce yourselves and decide amongst you who will begin the presentation. Sure. Well, I think I'll be beginning the presentation. My name is Bo McCall. I'm in the City Manager's Office of Performance Management. Kate was uh, supposed to be presenting today, but she's also ill as well. Oh, well, I'm glad they're not here. Yes. All right. She's, I'm sure she's watching on Channel 2. There you go. And I'm <laughs> Gary Sage. I'm the Research and Policy Officer for the Economic Development Corporation of Kansas City. Well, Gary, and thank you both very much. So thanks for the opportunity to present the results for the uh, 2017 Business Satisfaction Survey. This is a survey that my office has been working in collaboration with the EDC and also the mayor's office. Uh, we've been uh, administering the survey since 2011 in the city. So just to briefly discuss the methodology of the survey, uh, the administration is through a combination of mail and online. We, uh, our ETC is the uh, administering organization. They administer it in November, December of 2017. Sample size, there was approximately, uh, there was 513 businesses. We had a stratified random sampling, just like we do with the resident satisfaction survey. We had a minimum of 100 in each of the four geographic zones for the survey. And then our margin of error is plus or minus 5%. So we're going to be wanting to uh, pay attention to any, uh, any changes in trends between 2016 and 2017 that are over 5% to be statistically significant. And just to give you an idea of so the characteristics of some of the businesses that were responding, 58% have been in KC for more than 21 years. 43% uh, have less than 10 employees at the location that was surveyed. And then uh, the survey is, is asked what industry uh, the folks are in that are responding to it. There are seven industries uh, there. And those industries are all part of, they're identifying the Advanced KC Economic Development Plan. Uh, so that's why we... Uh, survey on those industries. Other, you'll see it's uh, the other services, construction, accommodation of food services, real estate. And then just to show you some of the, the sample of the respondees that uh, responded to the survey, the uh, geographic area is broken up into four different districts, the north, west, east, and south. We had slightly more respondees from the north and west. Uh, but again, we had over 100 from each, uh, each district. And 48% of respondents said their personal residence was within KCMO. And I guess just as far as the takeaway from the survey before we get into the analysis of it, um, the first takeaway is that the results were very similar to 2016. There wasn't a whole lot of change. It was pretty steady across the board. Uh, and then the other takeaway would be that our resident survey uh, has a lot of alignment with the results in this survey, too. And we'll be showing some of those uh, results from the FY17 resident satisfaction survey. But uh, to start off, Kansas City is a place to do business. This is like our high-level measure for the survey, kind of like on the resident satisfaction survey uh, as a place to live or a place to work. We're state steady, 70%. There was no statistic change there. Uh, and we're keeping that all-time high. As far as businesses that uh, rate KC as below average or poor, there's only 6%, and that's also been pretty steady as well over the years. And then one uh, statistical change that I wanted to, to point out, in the East Zone there was a uh, decrease of 7% as far as uh, satisfaction rating Kansas City as a place to do business uh, between 2016 and 2017. Last year in 2016, across the board, northwest, south, and east, the zones, it was, uh, there was no statistical difference. 
Uh, but this year we did see that uh, decrease in the, the east. And then looking at the uh, Kansas City as a place to do business by sector, so breaking it down into the different industries, different sectors, uh, fell into th to three groups. There was a higher than average satisfaction, average satisfaction, then lower than average satisfaction. And uh, the differences in average you can see stands out uh, as far as how it you know, rated Kansas City as a place to do business, excellent or good. In the public administration, uh, education, nonprofit, design, engineering, health, science, and services, those were higher than average. And then lower than average, uh, the supply chain management, financial, technical. Uh, you definitely see those differences between the, the lower and the higher. And we will be doing more analysis on um, the context of, of why the supply chain management, financial, technical rated it lower than average. And then perceptions of the city and city government. So, the, again, these are kind of the, the high-level measures for the business survey. So the only change was in the quality of new development in the city, and that actually went up. Uh, otherwise, they've pretty much maintained the overall image of the city and overall quality of life in the city remains high. Resident satisfaction, again, there's that alignment between 66 and 67%. Uh, overall feeling of safety in the city, while there wasn't a statistically significant change in that, it has maintained a trend downward. Uh, and then uh, overall value received for city tax dollars and quality of education uh, remain lower. And then looking uh, at the ranking, so the survey asked uh, business, business owners to rank their, the most important factors as far as keeping their business in the city. and. Um, so the rankings, we have 2017 and 2016. On the left here, you'll see these arrows. That indicates whether increased or decreased from the 2016 ranking. So availability of telecommunication, attitude of local government, and the low crime rate, all state top three. Uh, availability of telecommunication did move to that first spot. Those have been pretty consistent over time, uh, top three. The uh, most movement would be the quality of local schools see that moved up to the fifth uh, ranking and then also level of taxation uh, moved down three places as far as satisfaction with city services this is uh, looking at the user uh, satisfaction so this is broken this this chart is broken into two different columns essentially there's the services that were utilized by more than 50 percent of the businesses so that's saying that the businesses used 50% uh, or more businesses use those services and then the services that were utilized by less than 50% of the businesses and again over time these pretty much stay the same as far as the uses usage rate uh, as far as services utilized by more than 50% of businesses uh, you know, fire inspection stays high there wasn't a, a change in those top four mm -hmm. uh, police crime safety again that that one is moved down uh, tax collection stormwater drainage not really surprised based on the past year of weather that we had in the city uh, and the street maintenance has consistently been around that uh, that 31 percent and then the services utilized by less than 50 percent of the businesses there was a slight decrease with ambulance and uh, fire incident uh, but again those uh, remain high as far as satisfaction when we get to the lower end uh, of the scale uh, code enforcement municipal court did see an increase in satisfaction from 2016 and sidewalk maintenance uh, saw a little bit of a decrease. So this is another way to slice and dice the city services and identify the different focus areas, uh, which areas are most important for businesses uh, that are uh, city services. So above average importance uh, and above average satisfaction, we see airport services, uh, ambulance, business licensing, fire incidents, police crime safety, and then above average importance, but below average satisfaction is the street maintenance, tax collection, water services. Uh, again, these are pretty consistent with 2016. Um, and another way to look at this chart is kind of like the IS, important satisfaction ratings that we do with the resident satisfaction survey. And then looking at those zones and sectors that had a lower rating of Kansas City as a place to do business. So, Breaking this down, you know, is, is this a, is a city service that they're ranking? Is, is that part of their, their uh, judgment on why Kansas City is a, a 
not as good of a place to do business uh, as the other sectors, uh, as it workforce. This is looking specifically at city services. And so in the east zone, we did see that the overall quality of city services, overall image of the city, uh, value for city taxes, 311, code enforcement, and police crime safety response uh, were all areas that had lower satisfactions than the other zones. And then the supply chain management, there weren't a lot of city service areas that had lower satisfaction than the other uh, sectors. Quality of new development in the city was one. And then financial and technical, a uh, few city services in there, mostly business licensing, tax collection, um, overall image of the city. And then as far as rating the workforce, so we ask a question on there, that uh, ask the business owners to rate the workforce in the city. Satisfaction for all questions was uh, pretty unchanged from 2016. Uh, you will see that those first five questions, are, they are maintaining a trend downwards, uh, even though there wasn't a statistically significant change. Uh, Kansas City is a place to work, actually did ha have a small increase, uh, so that's staying up. But um, quality and availability of, of workers were rated as the two most important factors for businesses of these questions. And one thing that I know has been brought up with the EDC is uh, with the economy improving that there has been uh, you know, tightening with the workforce that might be part of the, uh, the decrease. And then again, looking at the satisfaction with the quality of workforce by sector. So this is looking at quality workforce broken down by sectors, whether they had a higher than average rating an average rating or a lower than average rating. Again, you see public administration, uh, education, design, engineering uh, had a uh, higher than average rating as far as the satisfaction with quality of workforce. And then on the lower, lower end, uh, supply chain management, specialized manufacturing, whereas financial, technical, health sciences, and art all fell on the average there. And then looking at the uh, differences in workforce satisfaction, so previous slides we looked at city services. This is looking at the difference in workforce satisfaction. Was workforce a uh, component of, of the uh, lower rating of Kansas City as a place to do business? We see in the east zone with the availability of workers, uh, education, uh, technical skills of workers, and productivity of workers, there was lower satisfaction. Uh, most important issue for businesses in those zones were availability of workers. And then supply chain, ma or supply chain management, you can see that the work so workforce satisfaction was definitely a, uh, an aspect of their uh, lower rating as a place to do business uh, across all the different categories, availability, quality of workers, stability of workers, they had lower satisfaction. Whereas you see with the financial technical sector, uh, workforce wasn't so much a factor. And then on the survey, we also ask the businesses' plans over the next three years, uh, whether they're going to increase employment, expand. Uh, about a quarter plan to increase their employment in the city, renovate in their current location. Uh, almost half did not, didn't have any uh, plan to change. There was, you know, none of the above. Um, and so you see, you know, about 24% uh, expanding in the current location as well. And then as far as relocating within KCMO, relocating outside KCMO, uh, relocating within, we saw 8%, relocating outside was only about 6%, 4% closing. And again, these numbers are similar to 2016. There wasn't a lot of statistical significantly, uh, statistical significance. And then we also asked the sources of finances in the last five years. Uh, working capital was the highest with 30%, bank loans 28%, uh, and then going down the, the list there, you can see if you have any uh, questions about where they're financing from. 51% of businesses own their facility uh, that responded to this survey, and then 46% uh, of businesses are members of a local business or trade association. And we also ask if uh, businesses currently export outside of the United States. 85% uh, of the cities that responded said, no, they don't, 14% uh, do, and uh, only 1% uh, said they don't, but they currently would like to.
We also asked a question about the perception of the uh, EDC. And so that's been pretty consistent around that 45% range. Uh, the use of EDC has been trending upwards, though. And then satisfaction with EDC, while there was a, a little bit of a decrease in satisfaction in 2017, uh, most of that came from the neutral. So uh, the, the neutral grew in that time. And then the highest awareness of EDC services was property tax abatement, followed by job investment incentives, uh, redevelopment incentives, TIF, and then financing. And then we, uh, we also asked a question about perception of other business assistant programs. So uh, Metropolitan Community College, Full Employment Council, Casey BizCare, Casey SourceLink, and the Justine Peterson Small Business. You can see that uh, the percentage of businesses that are aware of those services and then also the ones that have used them. Metropolitan Community College had the highest usage, and Justin Peterson was around 2%. Mm -hmm. And then you can also see the satisfaction there as well. Uh, the thing of note with this, the satisfaction is that dissatisfaction remains low across the board there. Uh, nothing's over 20%. And again, this was consistent with uh, 2016. I told you you'd be hearing that quite a bit in this presentation. So with that, that ends the presentation. Our, uh, ends, ends the presentation. If there's any questions, uh, we'll open it up to questions. <coughs> and then the full report is also uh, on kcmo.gov uh, under the survey. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. Um, I might start off with a couple questions, and we'll open it up to everybody else. Um, first of all, I, I noted your export services slide, and that 1%. I assume those seven have been put in touch with Narbelli Galindo. Uh, to uh, to start that uh, exporting work. Yes. Good. Good. Yes or no? You're very good. Very good, Gary. Thank you. Um, then uh, next question is that slide on the the other per the perception of other business assistance programs. And uh, although, uh, Bo, you mentioned that no one's at twenty percent, mm -hmm. um, we do have one that's kind of close mm -hmm. uh, with Full Employment Council. And I was curious if we have any. Um, insights as to why that number may be so high or if there's a way that we can find out a little bit more as to why that may be borderline so to speak I think <clears throat> what we've seen in the past councilman is that uh, the full employment council has a tough duty with regard to taking folks that oftentimes have got lower levels of skill mm -hmm. and trying to find them employment and it's been pretty consistent with regard to uh, those kind of evaluations that would be a little bit more critical, I think, with regard to the uh, quality of the job applicant and that kind of thing versus Metropolitan Community College. A lot of what they're doing uh, with businesses is oftentimes delivering free training, or if they're not delivering free training, they're delivering some high-quality training. So there's a big gap in there with regard to the educational capabilities, I think, of the two organizations and who they're customers are and who their target audience are fair enough fair enough and then last question was um, and, and it it may have a may not have a direct correlation to the survey but I'll go ahead and take the opportunity uh, certainly I think we all were surprised with the recent announcement of Harley-Davidson um, which may not may maybe less about us it's them um, but uh, I am curious if there is something related to their announcement or something that we can take away from that announcement that could either be informative to our survey in the future or if there's something in our survey that you might suggest is informative to an issue that they experience that may be a an, an indicator that a major employer may be looking to jump or looking to consolidate their operations and therefore we should pay special attention to that and, and I don't know but I, I I have to ask the question it's a good question um, you won't get a yes or no this time no I'm not going to be able to do it that <laughs> simply um, Harley Davidson was actually the first project I worked when I came to King, uh, the Economic Development Corporation in 1996 so it's very frustrating on both a professional and personal level to watch this one close down in Kansas City. Um, when I was at the Metropolitan Community College, we did a lot of work with them. We actually, uh, the Business and Technology Campus, 
was the entity that pretty much screened all their employees, which was an unusual one from the standpoint, I think it was the only employer that has ever done that with the college. Uh, we actually had a Harley-Davidson laboratory down there that was pretty much dedicated to assessing candidates to see whether they were qualified. Um, it was an unexpected one. I don't know that there was anything that stuck out that would really tell us that this thing that they were about to close down other than the fact that they've been having trouble with sales, particularly in North America for a long period of time. But for the 20 years they've been in Kansas City, they've also weathered that in other occasions too. So, and I know some of the economic development organizations as of like in the last two weeks had visited their plant. Um, you know, oftentimes when a business is having trouble, uh, they go quiet on you would right. be the way to put it. And they're often, they're often very, very close to the vest is what they're going to do. We do have means of identifying where we may have um, potential businesses that are either going to close or leave. And when we see those indicators coming in, for example, the one that's most common in Kansas City is that somebody's got a lease that's coming due. And we track that with our CoStar system. So if we see somebody that's got a lease that's coming up in like the next year, we usually are going out to visit with them because we want them focused on trying to renew that list on Kansas City rather than any of the other more suburban communities. But I think Harley was, I don't know of anybody that anticipated it. I really don't. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think that they intended to let anybody know that they were about to do what they did. Uh, usually when you've got a plant shut down of that size, I think the federal government requirement on the WARN system, W-A-R-N system, workforce, I think they've got to give like a month's notice, and I'm not sure why. 60 days, and they haven't 60 filed. 60 days, and they haven't filed. So, you know, this one was very unexpected. Mm -hmm. No, I appreciate that answer. But were you going to add something? So from the survey design perspective, we do ask a question. Uh, when, when we ask this question here, what do you plan to do in the next three years, there is a follow-up. If you're relocating uh, within KCMO, relocating outside of KCMO, closing, we do ask why on the survey. Uh, I don't have those results with me, and I can be happy to send those to you. Sure, sure. You know, a lot of times, like with the closing, we see retirement. You know, the business owners are retiring. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I'd be happy to that on no thank you very much uh, I'll open it up to other questions councilman Taylor uh, thank you thank you for the report I uh, we had this in uh, the EDC board meeting uh, Friday essentially good information I think it's uh, important to note the uh, the business satisfaction uh, for small businesses and we had a small business committee uh, today uh, meeting today and I thought it was uh, uh, one interesting statistic that we were provided uh, was uh, for uh, why it's so important to, to really support these small businesses is for uh, last year for new business startups employing people for the first time uh, there were 16,000 jobs created uh, from very small businesses in Kansas City and so that's uh, uh, I was telling somebody that's the equivalent of the entire Cerner project in South Kansas City over 10 years the 16,000 new jobs one year for small businesses and that's just startup small businesses not those that started two or three or four years ago because uh, the number is about uh, 16 to 15 16 17 thousand each year so it's really important we keep doing those things that we need to do to support our small businesses uh, really want to thank uh, we've got John Pager uh, in the audience and Bizcare. I just actually popped into Bizcare on my way over to thank everybody again and for the good work you're doing with our small business startups and uh, keep keep uh, doing that. It's showing in the uh, survey responses, so we appreciate it. All right. Uh, thank you, Councilman Taylor. Anyone else? No. I, I think you have bowled us over, uh, and actually uh, you have, and I continue to thank you for the work that you do. It's important work, and it helps us know in what direction we wish to go. So uh, any any final words or final thoughts, gentlemen? Just one, um, we had two of you in, and you'll hear this again. Uh, looking at the survey, um, and I've spent about oh, maybe two, three hours looking at the detail on it. One is that although there wasn't a significant statistical jump with regard to concerns about crime, there's a long-term trend in there that's showing an increased level of concern about crime for Kansas City. I think part of it's probably when the survey was being done, the news media was putting out a lot of stories, particularly on the homicide rate in Kansas City. So 
it's difficult oftentimes to try to tell what's impacting somebody's responses, but I think it's one that over time the council needs to watch. Second one is, is that I know you folks have got all kinds of things on your plate, but the level of detail, particularly on the regions within Kansas City and how people see things, I think it's worth for you to take 10, 15 minutes and actually get online and take a look at it because the different council districts are affected by different kinds of perceptions by the business community that's out there. Um, other than that, uh, the other one that comes up occasionally is that when you don't see any significant statistical change, there's a notion of whether we should continue to do the survey. And I guess as a nerdy researcher, I'd tell you don't stop. I mean, this is one of those things that, as far as we can tell, Kansas City is the only community that does a business survey like this. We've gotten a lot of accolades, particularly in the Midwest, people calling us on how do we do this, how is it getting done. Um, I think it's one of the reasons why we did this was that there's about 20,000 businesses in Kansas City. We've got seven business development officers at the EDC. So from the standpoint of just them being able to circulate in that business community and get out there and talk to them, it's not going to happen generally. So to give us some degree of statistical significance of how businesses see things. And then the other one is even though they get to respond confidentially at the end of the survey, uh, they're asked that if they've got issues, then we're more than happy at the EDC to talk to them. There's usually 60 or 70, I think it was 65 this year, that said they wanted to have conversations okay. with us. Oftentimes those are about business expansions, but oftentimes they're oftentimes something that's bugging them, mm -hmm. and we need to hear about it. So uh, my advice, uh, uh, Troy and Scott heard it on Friday, I'm riding off to the sunset uh, retirement as of June first um mere was that five months and one week not that i'm counting <laughs> um i was involved in carrie tyndall and i were involved in setting up the survey back when we first did it i think it's probably one of the best pieces of information you're going to get about how the business community sees kansas city so stay with it watch what it looks like over time particularly mm -hmm. those changes um, and insofar as you're not seeing the changes that's probably a good thing mm. on the whole. So, Very good. That's my advice as I ride off into the sunset. Well, good, sage advice. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for a horse for you. Um, <laughs> but uh, Carrie Tyndall decided she needed the last word, Gary, so oh. this, this really ought to be good. Why uh, is that not unexpected? Yeah, huh? that's a huge surprise, right? Um, I, I was just going to um, piggyback a little bit on what Gary Could said. Again, Carrie, just Oh, yeah, back. sorry. Carrie Tyndall, um, a Director of Economic Development and City Manager's Office. So um, I was just going to piggyback off of what Gary said about the value of doing the survey. And, and um, yes, I was there in the days when we used to do individual surveys at the business level, and so from a practical standpoint and us having good information of a cross-section of businesses it does have a huge value um, but I think also that what it does is it um, provides us with an insight into kind of where to dig a little bit deeper into the data and into our business community so since we've been doing this for I think six years now um, and I think you saw in this survey there were some specific sectors that sort of stood out in terms of some of their satisfaction results. So I think we're at the stage now with this tool where we maybe want to take a look at drilling down um, within some subsectors, either geographically or at the industry level, and developing some supportive uh, surveying techniques that kind of feed up to this. So we had talked for a while about maybe doing some focus groups or some spin-off industry sector uh, surveys that would help us get more uh, targeted in how we're meeting the needs, particularly of some of our target sectors. So um, I think that there's a lot of opportunity to build off the basic survey now that we've kind of gotten that um, per uh, per we're proficient at it at this stage. Um, I also just wanted to say that from a staff perspective, you know, this is not just a report that we're getting once a year and then we're not 
we're just kind of putting it on the shelf. So there are actually um, uh, meetings that we're trying to set up at this current time to do follow-up presentations with a variety of different stakeholder groups that we think would also benefit from having this information. So in particular, some of our economic development partner agencies like KCADC or um, a Smart Port um, with regard to the Supply Chain Full Employment Council about the workforce data and we're working with EDC and are in the process of setting up those follow-up meetings. So if council has, you know, suggestions about um, subgroups that they think that would benefit from this information, that's certainly something that we can um, do and, and get that information further out to the public. Very good. Thank you very much. And gentlemen, thank you again. Thanks. Appreciate you being here. Uh, we do have a quorum now, so we will go back to the top of the agenda and the approval of minutes for business session of January 25th, 2018. Uh, so is there, moved. Uh, is there a second? Moved and seconded. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all in favor of accepting the minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Then finally, the number three, the discussion of ordinances, resolutions, and communications on today's docket or for floor introduction. Is there such? Uh, Councilman Reed. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. I actually have three separate items that I would like to discuss. Okay. Uh, the first is uh, number 170963. This deals with, I believe, the contracts that Councilmember Lucas has uh, presented uh, to the full council. It was voted out of committee uh, last week at due pa as due pass, uh, and I am uh, requesting that we. What was that? No. Oh yeah, thank you. No recommendation. That, that, that that's why you just that's why you're the city attorney. Yeah. Uh, the next time, <laughs> grab a microphone. <laughs> Uh, it, w it was out, uh, recommended out of the committee, and according to the city attorney, who certainly uh, has us corrected uh, with no recommendation, I am uh, actually going to recommend that we send it back to committee and request that uh, we vote to do that. I have not had a chance to, to speak with Councilmember Lucas, however, uh, in terms of re referring it back to committee, but I will share that uh, at least two or three uh, city departments have reached out to me as it relates to this uh, ordinance. Um, and some of uh, the items that are listed in it. I have shared those with Councilmember Lucas, and I believe that it uh, requires a little bit more uh, attention from a committee perspective uh, so that if it is something that we're going to recommend, uh, that we're doing, we, we are doing um, our due diligence as a council to make sure we're recommending it. Uh, so I was just talking about you, Councilmember Lucas. I got you. Okay. He, I could see his ears burning as he walked in the room. So, so. Uh, since he's called it, um, that is what my request is, and I'm pretty sure uh, that uh, if he has some comments about it, I was asking if we could recommend um, to send it back to committee for additional work uh, from there. Uh, frankly, what I was saying is that I received some uh, comments from two different um, departments within the city. I've shared with you some of their concerns already, uh, and I think it deserves a little bit more work. And so uh, my request as the committee chair is to send it back to committee so that we can uh, do a little bit further work. And I know you got two items. Do you want to just uh, pause for a moment and see if one, there's yeah. – uh, so I don't know if anyone has uh, any, um, any discussion on that particular point, Councilman Lucas, since this deals with an ordinance that, um, that you were a sponsor of. I don't know if you have a comment you want to make or if you want to save it for later. I'll save it. Okay, um, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that more often. Uh, Councilman Reed, um, right. uh, second one. The second one, you and I had a conversation about uh, offline, but I will uh, publicly mention these comments about Ordinance Number 180030. This deals with the um, UNESCO uh, designation. Mm -hmm. uh, and I late last night received some correspondence from the Mutual Musicians Foundation and from their uh, legal attorneys as it relates to some of the items that are listed in there. And I'll uh, go over just a couple of them. And uh, what I request that we will hold it for another week or two. Uh, there's some items that need to be addressed, I believe, from the, uh, their perspective. Uh, one is that they certainly, as I am as well, certainly proud of the designation uh, and look forward to kind of working through it and trying to do everything we possibly can uh, to, to, to uh, enhance this. Uh, but they have some concerns about uh, the directives that are outlined in the resolution. Uh, one is that uh, the Mutual Musicians Foundation and also the Negro uh, Musicians Union is one of the same prominently uh, mentioned in the application. 
However, they feel as if that uh, the members or the officers have had no communications with the city on the application or the committee uh, in regards to this actual application. Uh, and so I think as I've read through this, it's important that we uh, certainly hold this up given that they haven't had an opportunity to even see it and they're mentioned in this um, resolution. In addition to that, um, there are a couple other items that um, I think of, of great concern, but I can save those for later. And again, I, I definitely uh, ask that we can hold this for an additional week or two and try to work through some of the concerns that not only the foundation have, uh, but also some concerns that I submitted to uh, the committee chair in writing uh, that have not been answered as it relates to uh, the NTDF dollars and also uh, some litigation that the Mutual Musicians Foundation find themselves in currently. Uh, one with the um, former executive director, Adita Dixon, and also uh, how that relates to the uh, organization and then what we have before us. And so I respectfully request that uh, hope. And as, uh, as the um, uh, sponsor of that, I've told Council Member Reed that I have no objection to that. Uh, sometimes communication is the issue and we can solve that. I know that there has been some uh, conversation related to it, um, but sometimes the, some members of the board um, hear it or don't communicate it. But no, nevertheless, we'll figure out what the problem is, so that won't be an issue. Um, number three. The last item that I had uh, is 180058, uh, and that, of course, is what the Aviation uh, Committee has heard this morning. It was voted out unanimously to uh, move forward with the MOU for uh, the new uh, KCI single terminal airport. Uh, we, of course, are still looking for folks to uh, sign up as co-sponsors, I believe, uh, of course, all of you have had an opportunity to review uh, the MOU in its entirety, perhaps, hopefully. Uh, we certainly had a, a committee as a whole and reviewed it, uh, I believe it was Tuesday of this past week. And uh, so just wanted to give an update about that and request if uh, anyone is so inclined, of course, to uh, be listed as uh, co-sponsors. I think it's extremely important uh, on behalf of this city uh, as we move forward and, and what I believe is a generational a decision on, on behalf of this entire city. So. All right. Thank you, Councilman Reed. Uh, any other uh, items, ordinances, resolutions to discuss? Uh, Councilman Taylor. I'll just mention, uh, briefly mention this in public safety. Uh, it's not an ordinance, but uh, we had, uh, uh, we you know, every homicide is a tragedy in the city, but uh, especially when it's children. And, and Dominic uh, Young, uh, Jr., uh, was murdered uh, just sitting in a car uh, as the car was driving on Highway 71. And so... Uh, I want to applaud the uh, police department for uh, recently uh, working with us to increase the re tips reward hotline uh, dollar amount to five thousand dollars. It had been a thousand for a long time. It was outdated. Need to be raised. Uh, they mentioned yesterday at public safety they're getting a lot more tips, and I think we're going to see some results from it. But uh, this, uh, just like when Alexis Kane was murdered, I know we've had uh, many other homicides. Uh, we uh, made an effort as a council to uh, uh, increase the uh, reward money. Uh, and so uh, Saturday I wrote a check for $1,000. Councilman McManus has, uh, I think Councilman Wagner, you've joined. Uh, Pastor Lindsay from Concord uh, has uh, uh, put money in, I think $1,500. So we're up at uh, around $10,000, if not more. I just want to mention that if anybody uh, is watching and wants to uh, add to that, they can contact uh, uh, crime Stoppers and uh, uh, Casey Crime Commission, and uh, let's hope we get these people off the street because it, whoever did this will do it again if we, uh, uh, you know, if they're out there. So we want to, you know, with Alexis Kane, there was multiple people. They were all caught, and uh, they're now serving time. So Very good, and appreciate you bringing that up. Thank you, Councilman Taylor. Uh, anything else? Um, I just have a quick one um, on first readings today. I don't know uh, what the uh, ordinance number has been assigned uh, yet, but related to the Buck O'Neill Bridge and the cost share agreement uh, with MoDOT um, to do the short-term fixes that are necessary as well as the environmental assessment necessary to plan for a new bridge with the anticipation we will be successful in April with the uh, PIAC election. Um, it is uh, the cost share portion coming from Kansas City is actually, and 
the manager can correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, there is actually money owed to the city from MoDOT presently. And so we would simply redirect those funds that are currently owed to us um, to be directed towards that project. I've talked to a few of you, not all of you, um, uh, as it pertains to being co-sponsors. I know we've got Councilman Hall, Councilwoman Lore, Councilman Fowler, Councilman mm -hmm. McManus, and I'll add you, Councilman yep. Taylor, yes. Councilwoman Justice. So I've, I, I apologize if I've not talked to you about it because I've been playing catch as catch can um, today uh, for that. But just to know that uh, that is coming today. Uh, yes. That Adam number Clark. is 180068. Thank you very much. And That's what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, well, I knew when he was going for his lap uh, computer, I knew what was coming. So thank you, Councilman Reed. Uh, anything further uh, related to ordinances, resolutions, or communications? Hearing none, anything else? Then uh, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. We'll see you at 3 o'clock.